And of course, you know, because of his experience, <laughs> he knew all these people, you know, like mm-hmm. Marshall McLuhan and Northrop Fry. And he said to me, oh, well, you know, the uh, W.O. Mitchell sat in that chair you're sitting in many times. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mitchell is a visiting uh, writer, prof at uh, Trent, and other uh, Leacock medalists have uh, uh, taught at Trent and had association with it over the year. But the significant thing was uh, the degree to which he told me that Ojibwe melody. Now, if you read it, and I had a hard time getting it, actually. I got a, an autograph copy of the book from England, I think, eventually, and it's all tatter- tattered. Um, the degree to which uh, that book shaped uh, Professor Simon's perspective on life and through him uh, shaped Trent University. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, if you read uh, Ojibwe Melody, it's about uh, summers at the cottage in Georgian Bay. And it's kind of folksy. And the first time I read it, it's like a stream of consciousness, you know, riding the boats, <laughs> canoes and going around the bays and, like I say, fishing and uh, the cottage. But after talking to uh, Professor Simons, I went back and read it, and and, um, and w- uh, it's much more profound. It's um, actually some of the times I thought I was reading about rocks and trees, they were actually metaphors for people and uh, their dignity and uh, and integrity. And and uh, Professor Simons said that uh, the book was a touchstone for him. Of course, growing up, it's his father's voice, so mm-hmm. that uh, makes uh, his father passed away in the early '60s, but it. It sort of resonates with them, but the Ojibwe melody is um, really um, stands out as a, a respect for the Aboriginal people and uh, their uh, perspective on Canada. And and there's uh, chapters about the need for a rapprochement uh, between the French and English people, just almost tangentially in this fishing and holiday at the cottage mm-hmm. story. But again, uh, Professor Simon said, you know, this is uh, a book that he reads. I mean go so far as to call it a Bible, but, uh, you know, for a source of strength and reference when he has what he called chores to do and uh, like uh, building a university in Peterborough. <laughs> Just a little chore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and it makes sense um, that it would touch him so much given that Trent is one of the uh, yeah. first places yeah. in Canada to have a... The native a, studies. A, 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 a yeah. Original studies. Actually, I think it was the first in Canada and I think it was tied to be the first in North America. There's one in the States at the same time. So it's pretty... Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, uh, we're, I'm here this week because they're celebrating uh, Trent's role in fostering Canadian studies. And, of course, Professor Simons was the uh, leader in that exercise. Exactly, yeah. And I, uh, I do have one question about that um, that I hope to get to um, before the interview's over. I do have a few more about the book, though. Oh, okay. Um, what made you decide to include writing exercises with each chapter? Well, um, there might have been two reasons. One, uh, one uh, was that the initial um, exercise was to try and learn something from each book. Mm-hmm. And um, so I had each book is packaged as a lesson. There's certain, there certain techniques um, in writing. Well, Sarah Binks won the Leacock Medal in 1948, and it's sort of an archetype of an intertwining of two uh Styles and there's like this over the top biography matched with a, uh, of a literary biography of Sarah Binks, who's a poet who writes bad poetry. So the bad poetry is all mixed in with this glowing biography and has a humorous effect. So mm-hmm. that's a kind of technique you could apply in different things. So coming back to your question, why did I end it with the uh, writing exercises was uh, to try and congeal that because each one of those exercises ec- echoes the lesson from the book. But the other thing was to – it's a book about humor, but m- many times it's I mean, hopefully not plotting, but, you know, it's fact-laden with the stuff about the authors and the times and trying to explain and analyze literature. I, I wanted to end on a little lighter note, so the exercises are kind of quirky and, mm-hmm. and to say it yeah. mildly. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, time to do any of them, but I, yeah, I, I look yeah. forward to it. Well, there's one there is uh, um, tell your, uh, describe your own birth in the first person. Yeah, and and yeah. Uh, and that's uh, from uh, for a book uh, called The Village of the Small Houses by um, Ian Ferguson, where he actually starts out and he's talking about his own birth. You don't realize that, you know, but his mother's pregnant and heading down the road in, the, <laughs> in, in northern Alberta. And yeah, wow, yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what I, I've heard you talk about this before, um, but what, in your opinion, is the difference 
uh, between humor and comedy because I have there is a difference there, um, and this isn't a comedy writing award; it's a humor award. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good distinction. Um, well, I think there is a distinction. I'm not sure, 100 percent sure I'm the best to articulate it, um, but humor is. Uh, is uh, defined by um, the Leacock uh, paradigm, if you like, in in other contexts. It's more of a subtle, uh, make you smile, think uh, sort of thing. Um, Comedy uh, often just sort of wants to cut to you and make you laugh and Mm -hmm. make you laugh and make you laugh and make you laugh. And uh, that's a pretty uh, daunting kind of enterprise as well. I mean, standing up stage and and, uh, maybe some of the parts don't always add up to something. Uh, I actually heard uh, Miriam... Uh, Taves speak here in uh, Peterborough last night, mm-hmm. and uh, she was talking about humor in her book, which of course uh, the most recent one is about the suicide of her sister. Mm-hmm. And humor plays a really important role in that book because it endears you to her sister. It really portrays what her sister was like. Uh, it's a novel, but you know it's it's inspired by that, and uh, amplifies the sadness. Because you're sort of, you know, somebody who is, likes to joke and humorous, their uh, death by suicide becomes even more tragic. So humor has, a, I believe, a, a, a quality and um, a purpose uh, just beyond that trying to make you laugh. Although, uh, man, <laughs> you can't, you can't under, um, state the importance of making people laugh and lightening our lives a little bit, too. So. Mm-hmm. Does that uh, answer the question? No, I think that was really well yeah, articulated. Yeah, yeah. Um, because yeah, comedy is sort of a. I'd like to be. Uh, I like to have the capacity to write humor. I'm not so sure. I think I'd probably starve to death as a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's sort of the end result of comedy. Anyway, it's sort of very. It's very. Maybe I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but it's it's sort of. Um, it's only good for so long. Whereas humor is something you can come back to. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, well, it, it, of course. There's some awesome comedians that make you think, and um, any time that we're in, we're induced to do that, I guess it has an impact. It adds up to more than the sum of the parts. But mm-hmm. um, Lee Cock had his definition of humor, but uh, maybe we don't have enough time to no, uh, probably to, not. to uh, go into that. And unfortunate, unfortunately, yeah. people will have to read my book now. Yeah. That's oh no. Too, well, that's well, terrible. <laughs> geez. Well, that is, uh, that is why I had you on the show yeah. so that, uh, people would know a little bit more about it. Um, but you are also in town, as you mentioned, um, to take part in a panel discussion at the contesting Canada's future conference that was just held at Trent. Um, and I was wondering um, if you could talk a little bit about that. The topic was changing urban spaces. and uh... Yeah, I um, actually just chaired the session, and um, there was uh, three young – everybody's young to me – but <laughs> <laughs> young researchers that were talking about um, – well, of course, you can't underst- uh, understate the um, importance or, of our more recent history and our future of – what urban life is going to be like in Canada. So it's not going to go backwards Mm -hmm. into more rural worlds. And so they were looking at uh, urban um, issues from different perspectives. One woman spoke uh, with respect to uh, sort of cultural institutions, uh, two museum projects that were intertwined with a highway project in Alberta and and others. Uh, One was talking about what is called participatory budgeting. It's a process where you involve more people in dividing up the pie. And I think, uh, and I could get this wrong, I know Hamilton and I believe Guelph were the the examples that we're using. And um, another woman was from the Kitchener-Waterloo uh, region and talked about the evolution uh, to amalgamation and why a regional government may in the end have been the right model for it. So this kind of mix of politics, culture, and uh, and that, and, and uh, it was it was kind of neat to take part in that discussion. Uh, I, I the opening uh, uh, discussions, uh, which with high profile participants, were musing about the need for a new metaphor to describe Canada. So there's a writing exercise that I, can, yeah. <laughs> I might put in my book <laughs> in the future. Come up with a new metaphor for Canada, because uh, as we know, our society is changing, and and some of the old past. Um, notions, even, um, you know, the mosaic or the two founding cultures or the Laurentian model that they talk about, you know, from the canoe and uh, fur trade type of things don't really capture what we, what our reality is today. And, um, anyways, um, 
uh, we left the room without one, but <laughs> yeah, that feels like a massive project. Yeah, so yeah. that, uh, oh, actually, that could be actually, the... actually, the chair did say we, we it's a union of union and disunion, which um, sounds way too much like um, uh, f- physics theory that I get exposed to at work. But uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's a, maybe it's the foundation of a metaphor. Yeah, that would be nice. But <laughs> I don't know. So work on that. Yeah. I, well, geez. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's my project for the rest of the summer. Um, where can people go to get your book? Well, uh, I think it, right, I'm in the process of uh, negotiating with a new publisher, uh, mm. um, and you know we can do another program on why you <laughs> publishing in Canada. But yeah. uh, chapters, uh, probably probably chapters in Peterborough is going to keep a few uh, on the shelf. Um, uh, after today, so that would be an easy way. Um, my, uh, they can email me. I don't know if uh, maybe you guys put this on the blog or the the examiner put my email address in a story that's on the web. And it's uh, it's called it's Canis Humorous. That's the name of my blog at gmail dot com. And anybody that emails me there uh, shows even mild interest in the book. We'll have one. Uh, and deliver it because <laughs> awesome. you want you want people to read it, of course. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why else? I hope it, in the coming months it might uh, be distributed more widely through the other publisher. But okay, cool. Well, cool. I'll, uh, people we'll bring, bring it in, and you know, like I, I could e- ebook it. And, great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. It's great to have a, a longer discussion of this kind of stuff. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you.